This video demonstrates an effective method of dealing with a hard cataract highlighting the chopping principles. This is a grade 4 cataract. I never forget to stain the anterior capsule with tripent blue in these sort of cases. Soft shell strategy is employed for endothelial protection. The rexis should never be small in hard cataracts. A small rexis has a higher chance of a capsular blowout and harbors a greater potential of iatrogenic capsular trauma during phaco manipulations, especially in the hands of a beginner. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed very gently at multiple points for fear of posterior capsular blowout. The nucleus should be pressed down each time the chamber shallows. A little bit of OVD is burped out of the wound before initiating the hydrostep. The anterior chamber is topped up once again with a dispersive OVD. Before proceeding with trenching or chopping, it is useful to clean up the superficial lens matter as well as the OVD in front of the nucleus. A few OVDs like viscoat are thermogenic and can result in wound burns. In this case, the central groove is sculpted using 80% torsional phaco and a balanced tip. The aspiration may need to be stepped up to facilitate rapid clearing of the lens milk which is generated during the sculpting maneuver. It is necessary to shave the side walls of the groove to give easy access to the FECO tip sleeve combo to the floor of the groove. This enables the tip to reach the trench floor for further deepening. Once the trenching is adequate, it is time to chop. The balance tip is drilled into the distal wall of the groove, thereby pinning down the nucleus for it to be chopped. The chopper, after engaging the nucleus surface, slices down towards the phaco tip and just before the two tips come together they are moved away from each other thereby creating a cleavage line which propagates towards the center. It is not necessary to struggle to have the cleavage line run all the way across to the opposite periphery at this stage itself. The nucleus is turned 30 degrees and fresh chopping is begun. Whenever a tendency for nucleus tilt is noticed, the phaco tip is further driven deeper into the nucleus with an additional burst of power without withdrawing the phaco tip. At the end of this stage, a little wedge of nucleus is chiseled off from the main nuclear mass. The chopping is continued sequentially after further rotating the nucleus. Since the nucleus tended to tilt with an additional buzz, the phaco tip is driven deeper without breaking the hold so that the chopping can progress at a deeper plane. Care should be taken not to distort the capsular bag and stretch the rexis margin during the chopping maneuvers. Moment a tendency to tilt is noticed, the phaco tip should be driven a bit deeper into the nucleus and the whole process is well synchronized to produce an effective chop. The nuclear fragments are then consumed. It is desirable to have the nucleus downsized into multiple pieces. Harder and larger the nucleus, smaller the pieces. One has to guard against post-occlusion surge, though with the higher end machines this is rare. The Sinsky in the left hand manipulates the fragment and guides it towards the phaco tip. Frequent dispersive type OVD replenishment will keep the cornea clearer on the first post-operative day. Not much of residual cortex is left if a proper cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed. Throughout the surgery, just a Sinsky hook was used for nucleus manipulations at various stages. In the subsequent videos in this series, we will demonstrate the use of dedicated choppers. At times, small chunks may hide from view only to show up in the post-operative period, so one has to be meticulous in approach. In this case, the last bit was eased out with the aid of capsule forceps.
In summary, capsular staining with tripan blue is important for capsule consciousness in order to prevent capsular damage during various maneuvers. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection should be performed very gently and at multiple quadrants to prevent capsular blowout. We should work at a deep nuclear plane for debulking as well as nucleus disassembly. Corneal protection is paramount, especially in harder cataracts, by repeated replenishments with a dispersive OVD and working away from the corneal endothelium. In the next series, we will share a basic video on how to evolve into a good phaco-chop surgeon.